What's up, everybody? This is Tom with Deep Video Live here on location at the historic Halton Theater. We're joined today by a very special guest, Mr. Ken Sorceron of Abigail Williams and newly joined Vale of Nuth. I said that right. It's not Penoth, like a lot of people say. I like to say Penoth, but they don't like it when I say that. Yeah, it's, eh, it's funny, if nothing else. But let's get right into this, bro. So I've been listening to the new uh, Vale of Nuth, Penoth, however you want to say it, and I am really impressed with the new like blackened direction that you guys are going in. If I may ask, what uh, what kind of spurred that? Is it just as simple as I like black metal and I want to do it, or is there more to it? Well, I mean, I don't know. I think they were already sort of going a little bit in that direction before you know I joined the band, um, like on their last EP. And so, and honestly, that's like the only one I really heard. So when I was asked to like join the band. Originally, I was just gonna like produce the album for them, mm -hmm. and then I ended up. They asked me if I wanted to do vocals, and I was like, "Yeah, sure." And then, then I, you know, then we started writing songs together and stuff like that. So it was just kind of what came natural, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's not really. Uh, well, there was the only conscious decision was to like make some songs that were like a little more like flowing and uh, or just a little more like something good to play live you know yeah that, L that probably one. a little less techie but still some elements but you know yeah that new I for, i'm sorry i forget what the newest sing over the video you just recently put out was i'm having i'm drawing a blank. silent prayer silent prayer yes yeah. that one is supremely groovy but it's still you know you know johnny come lately could just stand up and play that shit. so there's a nice there's a nice balance going on there i really really digging it so uh speaking of black metal you're more or less known as one of the top tier american black metal guys at least as far as uh at least as far as i'm aware and uh, what is it no about, one told me <laughs> what is it about black metal that speaks to you personally because i was going through the whole abigail discography uh, over the past week or so and it's it's so well-rounded but it's it all comes back to black metal and just so what is it about you that uh, that it speaks to mm, well i don't know i mean it's not like something i really think about anymore but i guess it's it naturally is like when i write songs like just sort of naturally goes towards that sort of style i guess i mean i don't like really sit there and say i'm gonna write some black metal mm. you know and i don't even care if people think it is or it isn't you know what i mean i'm just i just do music mm. you know and but if i am gonna do like another style like say like death metal or some, i do have to consciously think or right, i'm making some death metal now <laughs> you know what i mean whereas like the abigail stuff is just like it's just what I'm writing, you know? And that's why every album's like, can be pretty different too. Cause I'm not really, uh, try, I'm not I don't really try to limit it to anything, you know? No, I especially sure. don't think like, I'm trying to limit it to like black metal. There's, there's a lot of elements, but like originally, yeah, I heard when I heard the black metal when I was young, you know, I can, it was probably like 1996. I was still in grade school. When I, I was in a death metal first, and then um, I heard like Emperor. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, anthems oh. at my friend's house, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" It really uh, made me feel like we were doing something wrong, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Back then, it was it wasn't so common to hear something like that, no, you know. Leading edge, not even yeah. Edge. So. You know, that's a hard feeling to get these days, to be honest. You know, you just don't really, I don't feel like it's easy to feel that way about li when I listen to something, you know. There, yeah, there are people who would make the argument that, like, yeah, there's not really a whole lot new coming out now, but yeah. it's kind of all retreading the same ground. I don't have that problem. There's new so stuff. I, I mean, there's a lot of, like, good bands that do a lot of new stuff. I just mean, like, when, when, <laughs> Like you hear it and you're young and you think like, oh my God. It like stops you in your tracks. I'm going to go to hell for listening to this. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I went to Catholic school. So well, I was just coming out of that at the time. You so know what I mean? He's a recovering Catholic. Well, I was never a Catholic, but. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's switch gears a little bit because we're on a bit of a tight schedule here. 
you're a gearhead. And most, mm. A lot of people that listen to you have constantly changing equipment. Uh, but yeah. uh, is there anything, any sort of equipment that like you cannot live without, or that at least has like blown your mind and has been kind of like a staple in your in your roster? Well, a computer. Oh yeah. Because like a computer and an interface is like number one. If I had nothing else but a guitar and a computer and an interface and some software, I could like do whatever I want. It's still. Yeah. But yeah, I like gear on top of that. You know what I mean? I like amps. I like guitars. I like pedals. I like digital modelers. I like it all. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah you're re really, it would be the computer. Yeah. Any, yeah. Event, any particular preferences for all the tech heads out um, there? Yeah, I mean, I mostly use Pro Tools, but any DAW is, like, going to do the same stuff for you. But, yeah, I mean, like, right now, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I have a diesel VHX amp that I really like playing at home. It's mm -hmm. sick. But. Yeah, looking, for, uh, looking forward to seeing it in action, man. Okay, so this is the big one that I really wanted to touch on. Something that you had mentioned on your socials, uh, maybe like a, a year or so ago. You really touched on the subject of like feeling burnt out and wanting to take a step back. And I really feel like that is a very important conversation that doesn't get brought up enough in in these circles in metal because it's very go go go. There's not a lot of money in it. You got to grind your ass off for it. Nobody talks about how burnt out it can make you feel and the, and the real inherent value of taking a step back because, you know, I admire that you had the balls to outwardly admit that being as involved in all this shit as you are. And now now that you've taken some time, uh, now you're at the captain's chair of two badass bands pulling double duty on this tour. That's uh, So what do you... What would you what would you say about that? Do you have any advice for the kids out there who are really like really feeling conflicted? I feel burnt out again right now. Like yeah, I'm just uh, doing yeah. two sets a night. But no, um, when you're young, you should do everything you can. I, I mean, it's not. I don't think it's great advice. But what I did was like put all my eggs in one basket, and I just like lived life like like nothing else mattered other than like doing music stuff i mean it's a gamble you know i, I don't necessarily recommend doing that it could it could go badly you yeah, know what absolutely. i mean but that's what i did um and yeah i mean like i'm in an okay place you know now so sort of you know depends uh but yeah just keep grinding you know and uh just do what you want to do do what you want to do don't listen to i don't know don't follow like every trend you know or maybe don't uh, listen to haters you know stuff like that absolutely and i i agree and i would as somebody who went through something uh, fairly similar a few years ago i was in a couple different bands and was feeling really burnt out on at, the, at one point the thought of getting behind a drum set and getting on a stage in front of people would give me fucking panic attacks and i would even like just i'm not even ashamed to admit it i cried sometimes mm -hmm. and i finally was like look guys i really I, I love what we're doing here and i love you guys but i need to take a step back and thankfully my friends were very supportive and i don't eh, especially in professional circles i feel like there's not a lot of infrastructure for people to do that like if you if you pull back you're like no nah, I, I need to take a sabbatical i need to take like six months to a year to myself there goes your fucking livelihood so i feel like that hangs over a lot of people and influences their decisions but just like ken was saying do whatever you want whatever in whatever fashion whatever whatever that means to you if it means go all out and go ham or if it means take a step back in the interest of your mental health, fucking do it, man. And so just thank you for... Yeah, I mean, it's important to, you know, just try to... Don't overdo it, you know, but try to do what you can. Like, there was a time when I could play in like a million bands at once, mm -hmm. tour all year long. I can't do that anymore. No. You know, it's just, it's, it's, um, I'm like old now, you know, <laughs> it's like... My body hurts, you know. We should all look so good when we get when we get to however old you are. Mid forties. 
Yeah. It seems like you really do what you do now for you know, for the love of artistic expression and you know, if uh, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe a sense of community because that's what I get out of this. Um. Yeah. You know. I never really thought about the community aspect so much. I did when I was younger. That's probably initially why, why, how, why I got one of the reasons I wanted to get into it is, you know, I did yearn for something like that. And then I didn't really even, over the years, you just don't think about stuff like that. And then, yeah, I think during like COVID, I, I realized like I, I missed that, you know, just like pointless exchanges, you know, at shows even. I just missed it, you know? What do you think we're doing now? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I missed it. Like, it, f it felt so empty, you know? Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm good, like, two months out of the year now touring, you know, would Nothing be fine. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's a healthy balance. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm actually, this is a weird thing to say, but I'm glad you mentioned COVID because uh, now that you're back out on the road, and, and to be fair, have been for a little while now. I caught you last time you guys rolled through on the Devastation on the Nation tour, which was amazing. But uh, now that you're back, how have you noticed any changes in the landscape post COVID? Like, because here in the DFW area, it has fully bounced back strong. Like, I, I can't remember the last like week show I was at. So, but, but you're much more well-traveled. Uh, it felt stronger. Yeah, um, definitely. Like, I, our first tour back was, like, with Swallow Sun for Abigail. Um, and it, there was still, like, restrictions a lot of places. It was a little weird. You couldn't even, like, order a pizza without showing, like, documents. You know what I mean? And, and like, it was a problem that people couldn't get in. It, it kind of sucked, you know? But certain places it was good i was actually living here during yeah, that's right. you, uh, do you still live in dallas no i live on the oregon coast now oh, right on that. but uh yeah i moved from seattle to here like during covid Oof. yeah well it was you know it, my lease was up and uh couldn't really do anything there it was boring so yeah i had an opportunity to come out here i did um and then uh yeah, I was actually at the first show here uh, after COVID. It was like Devourment. Uh, yes. And it was like heavy metal parking lot out here. Oh, yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> was that the Was that the show where the where the fucking power went out? It yeah, it was. Shit. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it was a lot of problems at the time. Yeah, it was, yeah, and it was like no air conditioning. They have significantly it was upgraded the Crazy facilities. in there. It was so hot. But oh, yeah. Oh God, yeah. And that was like a big thing. Like, uh, we were all like just happy to be at a show again you know what i mean absolutely yeah and that was it was like it was a lot of people there <laughs> it was because people were hungry and yeah there, there were some uh, there were and some local heroes on here putting on like uh maybe some uh, Jewish probably shouldn't have done it uh, well yeah house shows but yeah, yeah. but, but uh, and i was like right after that like deicide came through like shortly after that mm -hmm. and the show was like bigger than any deicide show i've ever seen and i've toured with them before so i was like yeah, I was like, damn, like touring is good right now, you know. Yeah, because everybody's hungry. So it's 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 been good. Um, you know, like right now, there's a lot of tours going on this month. It's not like the best f for us right now, being like a smaller tour competing with a lot of big tours all at once. But yeah, the the tours um, up to this were were all really good. So yeah, we uh, we had a. We had a couple of people who were, who were calling that that sort of thing was going to happen. Like, dude, once the restrictions get lifted, everybody's going to be on tour, and it's going to be like, oh, we can't go to fucking four tours a week, man. What are we going to do? Eh. So we're it's man, a we're lot gonna, of bands these days. Well, speaking of travel, uh, what would you say one of your pl favorite places is to travel, like both abroad and uh, and here at home? Like, what do you look forward to? Like, oh, we're going here. That or that's probably fun. Mm, yeah, um, I mean, I like like. Touring wise, I really liked going to Japan. It was really cool. Oh, yeah. um, but you know, I live in the Pacific Northwest. It's always good, just uh, yeah. pretty much day trips. And I go on like vacations at home all the time. Like me and my wife, you know, we just like yeah. go. Well, we do. You know, I just I went to Italy recently. That was cool. Oh, nice. I like tra I travel a lot. I'd say yeah, yeah. I travel a lot, yeah. That's that's one of the but, that's one of the huge perks of being in a band is you get to travel these places that you might never make it to. I like like nature, like scenic, like beauty stuff like that. Um, Absolutely. You know, that's one of the reasons I moved from here. No, no diss, but yeah, I, was I was used to like driving and going to like waterfalls and like 
you know, like beaches and forests and shit. And then I was like, damn, I can't really do that here. Otherwise, I really liked it here. Uh, yeah. It was it was it was it was a good place to live. I was going to say, I thought it was a little uh, strange to hear that you left the Pacific Northwest to come to the Metroplex. But... I, I never thought I would like live here. It wasn't ever on my list, but then when I thought about it, I was like, yeah, I'd do that. And then, yeah, I honestly liked it. So yeah, I, I imagine it the cost of living is a little... It was little great. Easier. Yeah, it was, like, yeah. way cheaper out here. I mean, and honestly, there's a lot to do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, all right, well, we'll, we'll wrap up with one more uh, one more question, and then we'll let you get back to doing what you got to do. But uh, you got any good uh, horror stories from out on the road? Not not like drama or anything like that. We don't we don't go for the low-hanging fruit here, but any, like, silliness or, like, holy shit, did that just happen kind of moments? Like, yeah. What was a crazy... Uh... Any, like, uh, debaucherous runs? There's just so many things. They're all bad. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> uh, weird, badly behaved, you know? Uh, <laughs> shit. That's a valid answer. That's, that's <laughs> that is a valid answer. You know, that is fair. Yeah, it's, there's so many you don't know what to, uh, you don't know what to uh, I'm, like, a lot more chill now. Yeah. But I back in the day, it was, like, crazy. Yeah. It was that. legitimately pretty crazy. But in any case, I think that's going to do it for us. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Ken, for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, First Band's getting ready to go on. So if you like what you see, like and subscribe. Deep Video Live. We'll catch you next time.